Hey guys, what's up? What will be uh, possibly the season one finale of the Fiorentina Club, which we currently is it third in Serie A, only a few points ahead of Milan and Inter. And I believe we do face them in this episode. I'm not too sure. I know we face Milan, I believe, in a few weeks' time. Yeah, we do face Milan there in the league. Do we face Inter in this episode? We've got uh, Milan in the cup as well. We've got Juventus in the league. Uh, no, we don't. We've got Napoli. That's a, a biggest thing we've got left as well. Obviously, we're still in the Conference League. As you can see, we're going to sum this game up against uh, Union SG. And we should get a win here with our second team. And uh, Atalanta, I'll sum that game as well. We'll play Milan. And we'll play the Cup games, obviously. And there might actually be one more episode, depending on how we succeed. Obviously, if we make it through in the Cup, this is the semi-finals, we'll make it to the final. And depending on how we do in the Conference League, because I do expect us to win the Conference League. You know what I mean? I feel like we should win the Conference League. We've got a pretty good team. Depending on what teams are actually still left in that competition, I'm not too sure. But we'll find out in this episode how we do, obviously. Let's uh, start the episode off with a big game hit up against Roma. And uh, hopefully start the episode off with a win. And as you can see, this is uh, Roma's team. Obviously, they're putting uh, Matoma. They've got Abraham and Lukaku up front. They've got Paredes, Cristante and Pellegrini. Smolin, Mancini, Kumbula. Rupert, Schutzi, and Zuleski down the right-hand side. That is a pretty good team. Let's get into this one and hopefully beat them here. Oh. There's Milenkovic though, incredible defender from him. A Serbian centre back, I believe he is. There goes Gonzalez, the main man of the team. Frees it free to his fellow Argentinian, Beltran. Beltran hits it, and Rupert Schutzi make a, makes a great save here to start. Well, to keep them level in this game. And from the corner here, Mandrago, no, it's a Barak. I need to put Mandrago back in corners, I forgot about that. And Danzi to Milenkovic, and his shot. He went for the acrobatic, I thought he'd just go with power. Go to with a presser. Oh, done well here, Roma. They find a way out. Kumbula gets it out here to Pellegrini. Nazalewski. Parisi dives in. Doesn't win a challenge, though. Nazalewski using his pacer. Romelu Lukaku hits it, and the keeper makes a great save. And how have, how have we conceded? Uh, like, why, why, man? Like, it's so annoying, man. Like, let's just, let's, let's take this in, man. And like if Lukaku scores this goal, like you know the first shot, fair enough. I'm like, alright, cool, that's a goal, right? And he doesn't. I keep him as a great save, and it hits Parisi, right? And it just falls straight back to Lukaku. It, like it's just so annoying, man. Like it, it doesn't matter what game mode I play, I just get dealt stuff like this. This is why, I like, I don't know. I just feel like this, this stuff happens more than ever before. Like in FIFA 23, you know, that would happen now and again. But not as often as it does in this game. And then by Dodo, twice there. Gonzalez as well there to get inside. Gonzalez going to hit that cross goal. Gonzalez, oh, he hit it straight at a keeper for some reason. No. Matoma. Mandrago had a good defending. I think it's Abraham by Danzi now. He's getting him involved more in the game. Gonzalez uh, does incredible there. Beltran make that run. Can we find him? Beltran in the centre. Beltran header goal. Love to see that. That works out perfectly. There. The perfect cross by Gonzalez. And Lucas Beltran finishes the chance at the end of it. Makes it 1-1. A man who's on fire this season for us. And Nicolas Gonzalez proves why he's our best player with that pass. Well, the cross, I should say. The pinpoint crossing we saw there. He goes around the defender. Just floats it in. And Beltran just... Heads it past Patrizio and it's a uh, 1 1 in this game. Let's to see it. Thankfully, it didn't. It's by Danzi. Into Gonzalez. Gonzalez now. Gonzalez at his feet. Oh, what a small force about trying second shot. I'll try now over to Gonzalez. Gonzalez, go back to Baldanzi here. Baldanzi hits it, blocks by Mancini. That's a till. Wins it, until. Why not half time? Why not hit that? Oh my god. No, it's, that's Parisi. That's our left back. I just hit that because it's half time and I might as well. What have we just seen? That's, that's a fullback doing that. Barak, big challenge there, but Matoma still got the ball somehow. 
So the first one is going to. Oh no, it's got inside there. Oh no. Oh, it's 2 2. That's good from Matoma, but it's poor from me. I need to see what happened again here. He just drifts into that space. It's a great bit of dribbling by Matoma, and he missed it 2 2. Fair enough. Their first goal was questionable and shouldn't have happened, but the second goal, you can't deny it. Oh, I just. Tommy Abraham now coming forward here. Roma trying to show why they are second in the league and the Kaku somehow makes it 3-2. They've gone from winning this game to losing it in a matter of blinking an eye. And it ain't great because Lukaku scores twice and his first goal shouldn't have happened, as I keep saying. And again, it's just one of those where... I get to Badanzi, into Gonzalez. Gonzalez at his feet, hits it, and it's just wide. Oh, mistake there, Badanzi. Got to get to that. Beltran now, you've got to score this. Got to make him pay. Beltran hits it and makes it 3 3. The press there on the Roma defence worked perfectly and they gave the ball away and we levered it at 3 3. We do deserve something from this game. We definitely don't deserve to lose it. Because so we don't deserve to win it, Roma have been good in this game. They deserved their goals other than the first one. And Beltran makes it 3 3 here. Gross is his second of the game. He's been an incredible man this season ever since I put him into the first instead of Enzola. He's been incredible. And we're going to try and hold on for a draw here and maybe, just maybe, try to get a winner. Romelu Lukaku. There's Quattro though. Incredible defender from him. Okay. There we go. And so just not be stupid with the ball here later on. To be smart with my passes. Speaking of smart with my passes, Baldanzi here to win it. Late on. Baldanzi makes it 4-3. And what a game we've had here in the Stadio Frankie at home. Badanzi could have just won it near the death for us here against second in the league. This is a big win for us if he did win it because we break away from Inter and Milan. Blowers. And Baldanzi played through by Gonzalez. Finishes that. And it's, and it's a great finish as well. I'd love to see it. It's a great goal as well. Uh, lovely team play. Oh, well, now bringing the ball forward to Tommy Abraham. Milenkovic slides in, but Lukaku is 4 4. It's 4 4. It feels like a game of ultimate team. Well, it feels like every game of ultimate team I play right now where I deserve to win, but I somehow will probably lose. Come on, Drago ran out. Is it into Beltran? Not as meant for Gonzalez. Oh, that's just one of those, man, where if it plays the right pass, we, we go in and score, but because it didn't play the right pass, we just can't do anything there. And that should be the end of the game, ref. You want to blow the whistle, ref? You want to just... Yeah, do you want to do your job? There we go. So it's a point, we'll take it. But it's kind of a tainted point, you know what I mean? I feel like we could have won this game, and the Kaku somehow grabbed a hat-trick in this game. I could not tell you how. Well, I can tell you how. Scripted, in a way, but... I do feel like we should have won this game. All right, so as you can see, our next game in the league is against AC Milan at home. And uh, yeah, we're going to get into this one. No, they are currently level, uh, not level on points, but a further ahead of us on goal difference because they've conceded five less goals than us, which is just is where it is. They've got a better team in terms of like their players, but we have been playing a better football, I'd imagine, considering. I don't know, have we? I don't know. We, 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 drew, we drew a lot of games. That's the issue. We drew a lot of games this season. We've lost less games than them, and we've won, was, uh, we've won one less game than them. That's why they're ahead of us. But um, yeah, as you can see in, the, in their team, they're going to go with Leal, Giroud, Chukaweze, Lotus, Sheik, Benacer, Pabega, Calabria, Tamori, Kalulu, uh, Teo Hernandez, and Mike Magnon in goal. And we do have a game against Milan in two days' time on the first, or, uh, I think it's the second of January, uh, not January, second of uh, whatever month we're in, in this crowd right now, in the uh, Coppa d'Italia semi final. So we're going to rest players in this game 
later on we're going to make changes. I can see we're going to go into the team with our usual 11. Obviously considering this team is playing absolutely incredible football right now, there's not really much point changing anything. And I might bring on Bracalo instead of Bonaventura. Any issues with Bonaventura? Is he a better end? No, we're going to take Bracalo as our backup camera. And then the rest of the team is going to stay as it is. Let's get into this one at the Stadio Franchi and hopefully get a win here after that good performance against Roma. And uh, we, we, we beat the game. We beat we beat the team we faced in the uh, conference league, by the way. And we also drew against Atalanta in between. So let's get into this one and hopefully get a win in a played game here in this episode. Okay, yeah, Gonzalez play through here. Gonzalez, it's the score here. Across goal, Manuel makes the save though. And we get a corner though. Oh, I need I forgot to put Mandrago right back in corners. I keep forgetting, but Milinkovic, can you win that header? Okay, why is he just headed it straight up in the air? By Danzi. There's a till blocked, and the ball doesn't fall back to a purple shirt there. And to Giroud. And what, there's something with Giroud in this game, man, where, like, before he shoots, he just stands there. Like, he did that last time we faced him. And I have conceded there, man. Like, I really don't understand how I conceded there. I got the ball out, like... And it somehow just ricocheted back into our box and then it ended up in the back of our net. I couldn't tell you how that actually ended up there. Like, look at that. Like, what is that? Oh, we're going to shoot from the free kick to say, but we can try to do something here. And by Danzi with a fella try to cap uh, Manny on our side, uh, offside, off guard there. That is a high foot, to be fair. We should get a free kick for that. Still spins in behind. Oh, Beltran, why did he just lock into the ball? Okay, Badanzi hit that. And Mike Mignon somehow saves that. How has Samori got the ball there? I don't, you don't understand sometimes why, why strikers just move out of the way. And let the centre back get to it. Keeper, go on, there you go. I was going to say, if you let that in. Oh, Rafael, it's blocked by their own play, I think it was. Or was it Milinkovic? I don't even know. Shot taken, and keeper saves it. Okay. And, okay. Uh, how are we not getting the ball? Like, this is what I mean in this game right now, man. Like, like I'm putting in perfect challenges and I'm not getting the ball. I'm going round defenders and somehow they're getting the ball. And one through ball. Okay, what just happened there? What just that? What did Papega do? Did he fake shot? Oh, what was that? Like, this game just feels impossible right now against Milan. Like, there's something about like this game. It's felt like I had no chance in the beginning. Fair enough. I'm just going to the uh, game against him in the cup. So till now, into Barak. Oh, how, how, like, right there, how does Beltran uh, Beltr not go through? I'm, I'm like somebody of my words, I cannot believe. I'm literally, uh, this is what this game's been. There's somehow magically they get the ball back. I look here, Beltran spins the ball away. And Kaluli perfectly just puts in the perfect challenge, stops it dead. And Beltran here could get the ball back, but he doesn't. My defenders are just winning everything, and my defenders can't. Like, when they win the ball, they don't get the ball. Oh, the if it goes through now, I'm just bringing on substitutions. Like, I'm bringing on five substitutions, resting our best players. And Danny Zabaios for Barak, and the rest will be completely fine, I imagine. I'm going to wait for him to come on. I'm going to try to save the penalty. If not, I'll just send the rest of the game. There we go. And we're going to send the rest of the game and get into the uh, game in the cup. Alright, so as you can see, our next game is going to be up against Juventus in the Serie A because I'll send the game up against uh, AC Milan in the Cup in the Coppa d'Italia semi finals. We'll pick up a 3 3 draw because we will play the second leg. And I thought it would speed up the episode a bit more instead of playing that game. I can get into this game against Juventus. Which is, which is going to be massive to our season. And we've got these games in between we can sim and also the Solvay Praha games we're going to sim and we should be able to beat them. And we go into the final month of May where we mainly have Napoli and depending on how we do in the Cup and the Conference League, then maybe we'll have a final here and there. But we're going to get into this one up against Juventus. As you can see, in the league, they currently sit six, three points behind us. So a win here for them is massive because they will go possibly into a Champions League position. We will drop down to a Conference League or Europa League position depending on Inter's results elsewhere. So we're going to get into this one and hopefully at least get a draw against Juventus. I wouldn't mind going down into Europa League next season. 
But looking at the uh, Juventus' team, they've got a great team. They've got Dusan Flavich, obviously, formerly of Fiorentina. They've got Moise Keane, Chiesa, who I believe is formerly of Fiorentina. Rabio, Locatelli, Pablo, Gavi, Kostic, G- uh, Gatti, Bremer, Danilo and Szczesny in goal. Let's get into this one and just hope for the best in this game because a loss here will be massive for our season. Well, it, it will be detrimental to our season is what I'm trying to say. Like, we can't lose this game. Kostic now. Shot taken. Why is it just falling? It's handballed at the ref. Why, why are my defenders just sat doing nothing in that whole time? Like... Oh... And why is it just, again, just fall straight back to a, an opponent? Look at that. Just fell perfectly back to Moise Keane. So of course it would. A box, and the player's going to run into it and score. Guarantee you. All right, Canal. Into Bartram, trying to level it. There we go. Why did Chesney just move out of the way? I'll take it. But Chesney literally moved out of the way there and just opened up the goal. It's better me to go far post, but I go. I just no, he just leaves the goal open. Chiesa now. Oh no. Good save there, keeper. Chiesa now. Okay, Gavi somehow kept the ball there. We go by Danzi, wins it back. Danzi to Gonzalez. Gonzalez into Beltran. This has to be a goal. This has to be a goal. Malik now. Kadarush Milik. Okay, what's it? Watch it. Okay, go safe keeper. Mr. Halter just walked it into our box. I'll try now, out to Gonzalez. Gonzalez now. Lovely work there by Gonzalez. Can he switch that into Satil? Why did he take that type of touch? Kostic. By winner, I meant for me, not for Juventus, by the way, game. So stop what you're doing. Okay, what a save by a keeper. That's an incredible save. There's a corner later on. They're taking off Vlahovic when they have a corner. Are they stupid? Corner whipped in. Gonzalez has it clear only as far as Talis Magna. We hits it. And no, no this, this referee, man. Again, I'm putting a put in the line. Give me a fairly tall player. Okay, why is it giving me Dodo again? Okay, no, the game's actually switching with players. Oh, thank God I missed. Why did Bremer take it? It's a draw against Juventus and we deserve to win. I'm going to take a break in between recording this and the next game because this game right now feels awful. It doesn't, it's not fun to play right now. Every ball is just bouncing back to the AI. And I'm drawing games and like I'm not winning when I should be winning. All right, so after that one more draw against Juventus, we simmed a bunch of games via the calendar, and I can see we picked up a 3-1 win after a 1-1 draw against Slavy Prague. So we go through to the next round of the Conference League, and we have to come into this game against Milan in the San Siro at 3-3 in the Coppa d'Italia semi-finals of both is. So it's going to be a tough game. Obviously, after this, we take on Aston Villa in the Conference League. That's going to be a tough game. We've got Napoli. We've got so much to get through. I'm going to probably edit the episode together after this game just to see how long it's going to be, because it could be pretty long. Their team is Pulisic, Okafor, Chukwueze, Pabega, Lost the Sheep, Benacer, uh, Kalulu, Pellegrino, Calab- uh, Kadara, sorry, Teo and Mike Mignon. It's kind of a weaker team, but also some strong players in there. Obviously, the front line is pretty strong in the defence. It is weakened with the two centre-backs, but at the same time, it's still a pretty strong team. Let's get into this one. It is 3-3 going into this game. So, one goal could change... Well, one goal will change everything, because if we score first... We can pretty much just defend for a lot of it, but we're going to have to go into this one and uh, try our best to get through to the uh, to the final of the Coppa d'Italia. But if we don't, then, you know, it's something to build on in the future seasons. So let's get into this one and uh, see if we can at least put up a very good challenge up against Milan, who beat us early in this, earlier in this episode. That's a cheap load, just inside here, and there's Quattro with some great defending in there. Paris is get out away from Chukwueze. There we go. Now Barak. Into Sotil here. Sotil drifts inside. 
Sotil to open the scoring here. Sotil shoots and scores. Some great dribbling there by the Italian past the weaker Milan centre-backs and that puts us ahead on the night and on the aggregate scoreline because it's 4-3 overall now. 1-0 on the night away in Milan. And what a moment it is for Sotil as well. It's a great goal. Some lovely work to play around it as well. Some great defending at the other end. Sotil drifts inside of, uh, I believe that's Pellegrino. Of his, oh, I think it was Pellegrino his name was. And puts it in the back of the net and Magnon can't save that one. It rolled through to try and get the end of it and it's not worked out. But win it back there with Badanzi, unfortunately, give away a throw in. And Quattro wins it back again. Honestly, Quattro has been one of our best players all season long. Consistency as well. Consistency is key. Beltran, let's make it 2 0 here. I could have played it across, but Beltran's got that finish. And he makes it 2 and 5 overall and 5 3 on aggregate. And what a performance to put in, man. Quattro in defence is game. Our whole defence has been great this whole season. I reckon, like, honestly, we don't change anything about our defence for season two. Maybe the keeper, but other than that, I don't feel like we change anything because Quattro is quality, Milenkovic is quality. By Danzi here, incredible work there. Barak hits it, blocked by Pulisic, and Satil can't collect that somehow. 20 minutes remaining. Oh no. Big opportunity here, Tricker, where's it? Oh no, how's he got that pass through? Into Olivier Giroud. How did he get that pass through? There's a way he was in this competition. That's stupid. How does he get this pass through here? That's what I need to know. And why is Giroud inside? Why is Bodanzi let to go across him? And what would this, any player going to do that? Not take a touch and go in, into the gap? Now the game's doing everything to get themselves back into it. Milinkovic will challenge. This is a very tense end to the game. It's probably going to all be in this. Gonzalez. No flat. Baldanzi to end it. Baldanzi. Let's put it wide. I was hoping at least would force a save to get a corner. And brought in a Musa late on in this game. We've got 30 seconds. Final kick of the game, maybe from Magnon. Need to win that head of Milinkovic. Yeah, that's done. And that's the end of the game when we're through to the final of the Coppa Italia and we deserve it. What a performance by this whole team. A little bit shaky at the end due to the press, but we managed to beat it and get through. Okay, so as you can see, I decided to just sim the first thing and I completely forgot to press record when I did so. And we picked up a 3-2 win over Aston Villa via the simulation away from home. Which is rather good. I can see in the semi-finals it's Lille v Dinamo Zagreb. And Lille will most likely be in the final along with us. And I reckon we can beat Lille. Honestly, I reckon they're a team we can, we can pretty much, not easily beat. I reckon we can beat them convincingly, but not easily. You know what I mean? I reckon we can put up a good performance against them. Similar to what we did against Milan. If we can, you know, put in great performance against the likes of Napoli, Roma, you know, AC, Inter, uh, both Milan teams and everyone else. Then I reckon we can do a good job against Lille, but we have to get past Aston Villa here though in the semi-final with Borja Iglesias and Morata up front, two brand new strikers for them, both Spanish, Jacob Ramsey, Douglas Luiz, Camara and Diaby in midfield, Moreno, Gonzalo, uh, Carlos, Pau Torres, Matty Cash and Martinez. How many Spanish players do they have? One, two, three, they have four Spanish players and then uh, one, two, and they have, uh, do they have any English players in their team? They've got Jacob Ramsey and in a way, Matty Cash obviously is Polish now, but he is actually kind of English at the same time. We're going to get into this one at home. And the study of Flanky has been kind of a fortress for us this season. And as you can see, we've got some great growth in the team this season as well. Let's get into this one and hopefully buck ourselves a spot in the final of the Conference League in this episode. Badanzi. Dodo. Feeds it through to Badanzi here. He needs Beltran. No, he doesn't need the Beltran. He's got... Parisi all the way back in, Cash blocks it. This is going to be out for a corner. Good attempt though. We need a. Uh, I'm going to put Mandrigger on corner, so for now. Whip that in. It's floated in. Milenkovic header. Goal with over the bar. Have that. Okay. Moreno crosses it in. All the way to Musi Diaby and a great save by a keeper there. 
I'm trying to flip that in, but we're going to get a free kick fan ball. Are we going to? Yes, we are. In an interesting position here for Barak to take it, maybe. Now we're going to play it short. And then we're just going to run into that. And, oh, Bardanzi. Okay, header. Gonzalez. We'll take it. We will take it. Doesn't matter how the goals. Doesn't matter how we get the goals. All that matters is that we get the goals. I was hoping for a right foot of Trevada there from uh, Bardanzi. He is left footed, to be fair. That's why I went for it. But I was hoping he would at least try with his right there. But luckily, it deflected straight up in the air and Gonzalez beats everyone to it and heads up past Martinez in goal. Oh, how have you messed a pass up game? How have I not got a ball there? Okay, how have they got a score? How have they just scored? I need I shouldn't have got the ball back because I didn't misplace that pass. I played it perfectly. Second attempt, second second of all, I should have won the ball back with that challenge there. We've got Quattro, credible defendant, as usual from him. Striker in game, so sort of sign strikers. Cross whipped in. Tiedemans is also on, and oh, that was dipping in, I think. Matty Cash, but Anzi's got a touch on that, but he's not kept it offside at least anyway. Ooh. Very tense into the game here. Let's just hold the ball and be smart about it. Dodo now. I'm just going to again hold the ball and be smart about it. We don't need a goal. They need a goal. And as long as we have the ball, they can't score. Let us go on the attack. Okay. No, oh, no. Ref, there we go. We're through to the Conference League final. We have two finals in this episode. And let's get into them. I'm going to edit this episode together first of all and see how long it's going to be. And then they're going to play the games. But a 1-1 one -one draw. We're through to the final with a 5-4. No. Is it 5? Yeah, 5 No. 4-3 four, four our group scoreline, sorry. Okay, before we get into the Conference League final here, as you can see, there's been three games in between the last game we played up against Aston Villa. And we played the uh, Coppa Italia final, won that 2-1 in the 118th minute of a winner by Beltran. And Kero Luciano made like 20, uh, not 20 saves, he made like 15 saves in that game. He had an incredible uh, performance in goal. Then we uh, simmed the game up against Napoli and we played against Calgary. Uh, Kadajiri, or however you pronounce it, I had to pronounce it. But we beat them 2 1 in the final game of the season. We saw us finish fourth in the league. And I went to just edit the episode and put them into this. And um, for some reason, the, it just wasn't there. You know, the footage just wasn't there. Like, genuinely, like, I literally recorded, I, I remember pressing record and I uh, went, to, uh, went to add the uh, clips into the episode and like put them all together and edit them down. And it just wasn't there. So we missed the uh, trophy list of the Coppa Italia. And we missed a dramatic game against Calgary in the final game of the episode, or the final game of the season in the Serie A to finish fourth in the league and guarantee ourselves Champions League football, just on goal difference as well, because we finished on the same uh, same points as Roma, who dropped off massively this season. They were top of the table at one point, and Napoli going to win the league title. Well, it's to be expected to be they were the best in the league by far. But yeah, we missed out on a trophy for lift, and I'm actually rather annoyed about that. So it was an incredible game. Like, there was like 20 shots for both teams and it went down to the 120th minute in extra time and we won it in 118th, as I mentioned, with Beltran. as sort of an incredible piece of defending and some great goalkeeping on a counter-attack as well. We, went, uh, we played it on a wing, uh, whipped in across and Beltran just headed, in, uh, headed, headed it in, headed it in at the back post. Like, if I can get my words, that'd be great. But yeah, that's unfortunate. So we're going to have to get into this game and um, played the Conference League final and obviously we've missed out on all of that which is rather annoying as I keep saying but let's get into this game up against Lille put that out of mind we know we've won one trophy this season we've won the Coppa Italia we have Champions League football next season but can we head into that season with two trophies won this season and actually get to see this one get lifted Gonzalez into Badanzi here Chance to go forward here, out wide here to uh, Gonzalez into Beltran. 
Or Tran here on the turn. Why is he not shot? Why did he not turn? Why did he not shoot? There's no reason why he shouldn't shoot. I press shoot. And he had time to shoot as well. Balanzi love that. Cut that back across Beltran. Better score. Okay, it's deflected on Shallow. We'll take it. We will take it. I don't care how the goals go in. That should have been a guaranteed goal anyway by Beltran. But it's deflected off Shallow into the back of the net. And it's 1 0 Fiorentina here in the Conference League final. And I'm not sure where the text ain't loaded in for the crowd. Love to see it. This, the game's been out for a month and that still happens. I've aimed far corner anyway, so I'm not sure why the goal, the ball is going to go straight out. Look where the shot's going near post. I've aimed far corner, genuinely. And luckily, Shallow put it far corner for me. Goda wins it back though, at least. Gonzalez now. Gonzalez, Badanzi. Barak now. Back here. Rack into Beltran to 2 0. There we go. I'm just playing possession based football right now. I'm just keeping the ball, beating the press, and trying to create a chance when I can. And unfortunately, we've done that twice here. It's a great through ball by Barak into Beltran, who this time means for a corner like I aimed, and like I aimed it and puts it into the second of the game and our second on the night. Love to see it. Quattro, what a challenge! Like, that's an incredible change. Oh, thank you for somehow not... Uh, I don't get how that didn't go in, but that shouldn't have even been a challenge for the keeper anyway, like it was. The second I saw he won that header, even though my defender was right there, I thought I was going to be a goal. But I see love that. Well, he probably could have been offside there if he sucked up, but unfortunately not the case. Jonathan David, Mandrega gets it off him, but it's somehow ricocheted back to them. And Kant sits it and keep, uh, keeper saves it. Love to see that. That's the situations where like your player should be in control of the ball, but somehow the ball just ricochets around their feet and they just don't get control of it. Gonzalez. Botran. Love that perfectly timed through ball. Into Nicolas Gonzalez for 3 0. That should be it. The game's dead and buried. There we go. And when the rest of this game now is just going to be damage limitation for Lil, I imagine. The second half is going to be an interesting one for us. We're going to try to score as many goals as possible whilst trying not to concede and letting them back into the game. An incredible, incredible through ball from Beltran. And Gonzalez ain't going to miss him there. And he makes it 3 0. Smiling out. It's for the Brazilian. Wins a ball off him and somehow has lost it again. What is going on here? Can we just get the ball, please? If they score, they're back in this game. She perfectly pressed him and won the ball, and I didn't get the ball. No, 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 no. If they score, okay, Terry to Toronto, what a save. That's the goalkeeper, he pulled out against Juventus, but even in a more impressive fashion than that. Corner here, hooked in. Had a clear by Quatra. Only as far as Goodmanson. Cross hooked in, and that's an awful cross in a way. Could have held on to that, but. We are Conference League champions, a 3 1 win in the final. You'd love to see it. We're going to have the trophy. If we're going to have the trophy parade, but we have two trophies to celebrate. And we're going to cut to the trophy lift in a second. And here we are for Terra Ticciano to lift the second trophy of the season. Unfortunately, due to whatever happened with the file, we didn't get to see the uh, Super Copper lift, but we get to see the floating Conference League trophy lift. I still don't understand how they messed this up, man. Now, it's been a thing in the game for years, and they still somehow managed to have stuff like this go on. It's, it's, it's impressive in a way, you know what I mean, that they keep messing it up this much. But Terra Ticciano, the captain, the 34-year-old, who took over the captaincy from Bonaventura when Bardanzi came in, has lifted two trophies this season, the Conference League and the Super Cup, or the uh, Coppa d'Italia, sorry, not the Super Cup, wrong, uh, wrong country. But you love to see it. And next season, we're going to be in the Champions League. We're going to push on to try to retain the Coppa d'Italia as well as we can in the Champions League and also win 
the Serie A. And let's get into the trophy, not the trophy, let's get into the, um, the stats of the season and talk about possible signings for next season and end it with the uh, trophy parade. All right, so two trophies won in our first season here at Fiorentina. Let's see how the team has done in terms of stats. You can see Beltran has had a fantastic season, plus four in his overall to 80. Gonzalez has had an incredible season as well. And Zola, Kawame is decent in the second team. Castro is decent in the second team. But Dance is coming in and done absolutely incredible for us. A player such as Till, who's done well. Icona is decent. Barak has been a fantastic player. I think we're going to replace him next season with a better player in that midfield slot, but he's going to be on the bench for us. Parisi, Bricallo, etc. So many great players have done incredible things. We didn't get to see anything with Kevin Alvarez, a free agent we brought in, but he's some great in the second team. And I want to talk about potential signings for next season. I do think left wing, we could sign someone. Centre mid, we could sign someone. And goalkeeper. Genuinely, are there any positions that I think we need to sign someone in? Centre backs, I'm completely fine with Quatra and uh, Milinkovic for now. I think they're incredible defenders. And Quatra is honestly so underrated. Like, you don't understand how good he is. He's 28, yes. But he is unbelievably, unbelievably good. Like, this defensive line is just... I'm, I, I know what I'm doing with it, you know what I mean? I know what the players can and can't do. And I don't want to change that just yet. I want to get comfortable with the team more. Build up the rest of the players more. And then maybe send a wall-class centre-back to go alongside Milinkovic if we need to. But Quattro right now is honestly irreplaceable, in my opinion. Until his form drops more than it is, you know, I mean, like right now he's playing at like a, not a decent level, like a, like a, like, you know, a, a level that, that just shows that he shouldn't be replaced. He should be staying in the team for next season. He can't play CDM if he needed him to, but I don't think it would be the best CDM because Mandragora, by the way, this guy and keeping him as a, centre, as a CDM next season. Genuinely, like, this guy is incredible. And he could play centre-back as well if he needed in the two. But honestly, let's talk about the potential signings we can make and show you the players that I think we need to bring in. I've got a couple of players listed on the uh, transfer hub. Well, I say couple. We've got quite a lot of players listed on the transfer hub. I can see we're still getting transfer offers for players. But in terms of, like, goalkeeper, you guys have suggested Edward Mendy as a goalkeeper we'll sign for next season to be our first in goalkeeper. But we also have a Marshall Villy. We don't know how much money we're going to have next season. That's the issue. So I can't really make a, like, a definitive answer just now. We're going to have to wait till next season, see how much money I have, and then I'll make a decision. But Edward Mendy, oh, my Marshall Villy could be coming in to be our first in goalkeeper. And uh, Terry Shoshana will go to the second team. And then Christensen is going to get loaned out. In terms of backup centre-backs, I want to send Vitti next season. I think he could replace Yuri Mina. And we can have, um, I forgot his name. The of uh, Ranieri, we can have Vitti and Ranieri as our two backup centre backs. Is left footed, six foot three, a young Italian talent. I think he works perfectly in this team. And in terms of other players we could bring in, obviously the first team you guys have been suggesting Roger Ibanez to replace uh, Martinez Quattro. And personally, I don't think he's the right player for this team. He's right footed. And if I were to bring in a left side centre back, I would like a left footed centre back, which is why players like Badia Shul are listed here. You know, and Capi is listed here. Luke Haber's listed here. I think Luke Haber would be the perfect centre-back for this team. He's very much like Martinez Quattro in a way. I think if we were to replace him, Luke Haber is my favourite option. Him or Badia Shul, I think, are the perfect players. He's obviously, Badia Shul is more of a physical defender, obviously taller alongside Malinkovic. But I think we need a faster centre-back next to him. So Luke Haber or Incapie would be the two defenders we bring, one of the defenders we bring in if we do something a new centre-back. That isn't something I want to do, but if I need to do it, then I will do it. And in terms of midfield, obviously Donny van der Beek, I'm actually going to bring him in next season depending on how much money we have to be a backup, a backup midfielder here and there if we need to. Nicola Ravella, if we have the money, I really want to bring him in next season to play in that midfield alongside Badanzi uh, Mandragora. He would be absolutely incredible as a box box midfielder. Like, I think he's perfect to replace Barak in the team. Obviously Italian as well, a great player. And in terms of uh, left wing, Thiago Almada, I've got an intro, I've got a feeling that Thiago Almada will be an amazing left winger. As you can see, his pace is incredible, his agility is incredible, his balance is incredible, his dribbling's insane, his shooting's decent, is a free kick taker, which is what we need. So if it were to sign a left wing, which I want to do, Almada could be the perfect player for us. Bring him in from the MLS, have him on that left hand side. It doesn't cost the most amount of money, and it would be incredible. Other than that, in terms of left wing options, we have. Neymar Jr. We could bring in Neymar again. Obviously, a less pace than obviously um, Togo Armada, an older player, nearly 10 years older. 
But again, another great player, free kick taker, incredible. We know he's going to be incredible for us if we bring, if we bring him in. That could be an option we have. Uh, Fran Torres as well, but I'm not too sure about him because he's not really a free kick taker. And I do want to free kick taker. So it's between Neymar and Thiago Amada to come in for the left wing spot. And I'm leaning more towards Amada in a way. I feel like he would be better for us as a player because he's, he's got more longevity than Neymar would. But Neymar would be like very good uh, instantly and Thiago Amada would also be very good instantly. But I'm going to stop waffling now. You'll find out the new signings in the next video. And I'm going to send you into the trophy, uh, trophy celebrations. But if you enjoyed this video, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel and uh, turn on notifications up as any videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching and goodbye.